Hi, this is Tyler with Power Tank, and today we are installing this monster valve flat into a KMC grenade beadlock wheel. All right, so here's what's included in your monster valve kit. You have four or five monster valves, four or five valve stem caps, the same number as monster valves. These are for your standard trader. They're quick release, save you maybe five seconds per tire, which actually adds up to quite a significant savings as a percentage of your total air up with these monster valves. You get a monster chuck. This is uh, what you use to air up. You get a valve core tool. So one side is for your standard trader. The other side is for your monster valve core. Uh, you also get a silicone grease packet. This is for future maintenance. Uh, if you notice your red collar starts to feel a little tight, you can uh, pull it off, regrease the O-rings underneath, and they'll be good as new. As far as install goes, we give you a monster key. This key is meant to slot into the brass conut on the bottom. That's how you uh, install these. Stainless steel. As well as a single-use packet of thread locker. Uh, we'll show you how to use this in just a minute. As far as tools go, pretty much all you need is a nut driver. This is 5 16 meets perfectly to the uh, monster key. But because today we are installing into this specific wheel with uh, the tire on, we're not gonna de uh, dismount the tire all the way. So I need something with uh, that's a little easier to get inside the tire. So I'm gonna use a socket wrench with a 5 16 socket. Uh, tape will make this easier. Basically, we're just going to tape the monster key into the socket, hold in place. And then uh, I just have some extra tools here to uh, deconstruct the bead lock. Uh, first step is I'm going to uh, remove the ring on this wheel. Um, I'm going to insert these two by fours in between the tire and the wheel. That way I can get my hand through and work around in there. Um, I just want to show you that despite having a tire already mounted on your wheels, um, you can install these monster valves pretty simply. All right, so uh, we are just about ready for the install. First, I let all the air out of the tire. That let me safely remove the beadlock ring. Got that off. Uh, if you already have a valve stem here in the second position, you want to take that out. Uh, and then so that it's easier for me to get my hand in here, I just have a couple of two by fours, uh, makes it really easy. Just shove it in between the wheel and tire, gives you plenty of room to get your hand in there to work. Okay, so really simple. Here is our MV flat. Uh, when you're ready to install, you're going to unscrew this brass cone nut. We're gonna set that aside. We're gonna take this brass washer off. That sits on top of the cone nut. We'll show you that later. And so all you're left with on the monster valve is this rubber piece and this aluminum spacer. Uh, you can leave the aluminum spacer on the stem. Make sure if you take it off that you may, uh, install it so the detent goes right on the O-ring there. Otherwise you're gonna get a leak. So all I'm gonna do is take my rubber seal Put that in the hole there. Just sits right on top. Monster valve goes in. That's gonna get pressed in there, perfect. And really, all you're gonna do is put the washer on, put the cone out on, on the back, and screw it in. But first, I'm gonna use some Loctite. So you're just gonna break off the top. And what you wanna do is put the Loctite inside of the brass uh, cone nut just a little drop. See, just, just like that, not a lot. And the reason you put in the cone nut is that when you screw this onto the monster valve, uh, the, the threads will actually push it this way rather than the nut pushing the, 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 the um, thread lock up. So, okay. So first cone nut goes on, make sure the flat side is towards the wheel. The detent side is gonna mate with a cone. Slid on, real simple. Actually, I'm gonna do this in one motion. All right. 
see. Just go hand tight. Perfect. Okay. And then my own wrench, or a socket wrench. Just kind of get it on there. Rotate it until it locks on. All right, that feels nice and tight. Um, I want to reiterate, re reiterate again that you do not need a lot of torque on this brass nut. Um, I'm just taking my two fingers like this, applying force with my thumb. It's not going to give me a lot of force, but the rubber gasket does all your sealing, and that's going to—that's really what gives the uh, that keeps it leak free. Now, monster valve feels super solid. Uh, I can get to both the cap very easily. Lanyard stays in place, which is nice. All right. Uh, when we're airing down, we hit the red collar. Real easy to reach with that uh, spacer we added. It goes down. Remember when you're airing down, you want to go all the way down and then just back it up just like an eighth of a turn. Um, all right, so uh, that looks good. I'm gonna pull this wood out, get the ring back on, uh, and then we'll test it out, add some air, make sure it doesn't leak. Alright, so our tire is mounted, beadlock ring is nice and snug, we have our power tank, now we are ready to test for leaks. So uh, we have our monster chuck here, this comes with your kit again. Now uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is the MV flat was designed specifically for the KMC beadlock. So it has a 45 degree angle chuck to match the angle install uh, valve stem on the wheel. Our MV uh, our MV wedge and our MV tap kits come with a 90 degree monster chuck because typically those mounts are going to be 90 degrees uh, on the barrel. Uh, you'll also want a tire pressure gauge. This one is one that you'll get with your kit if you add it on. It has a tire chuck on one end, nice easy to read gauge on the other, and a bleed button if you overshoot your target. For this video though, I'm going to use this big boy. Hopefully it'll show up on camera better. Same basic concept, big gauge on top, Schrader valve chuck on the bottom or at the other end of the hose. See that? Valve stem cap just comes right off. So easy, so fast. All right, now uh, with beadlock specifically, first time after you get your tire mounted, you always wanna stay away from kind of this barrel. If the wheel was infinitely wide, you wanna stay out of that zone. So what I'm going to do is attach my monster chuck clip it on and then I'm going to open my valve here of course nothing's happening because the power tank's not on yet but I'm going to open the power tank over here slowly pressure up the gauge and you can see Just how quickly we're adding air. All right, looks good. I'm going to shut off the tank. Down. We got to 26 PSI in just a couple seconds. Everything's good. If you heard a bit of leaking, that was just because there was no pressure in the line. Um, things were kind of open, but as soon as I took it off, you, 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 there was no more leaks. So this looks good. I'm gonna put the cap back on. Nice. Pull this off. 
cap goes back on. And just to make double sure, I'm gonna use some leak detector Windex. And I get nothing. So this is good to go. Very simple. Uh, hardest part is just doing the bead lock. All right, the last thing I want to show you is how to air it down with your new monster valves. Very similar process to airing up. We always start with our tire pressure gauge. Okay, set that somewhere easy to read. And we're going to unscrew the red collar all the way. PSI down to 13 just like that uh, a couple tips when you're airing down you want to start shutting the red collar when you're about 1 to 2 PSI, PSI away from your target in other words if my target is 13 PSI around 15 PSI I'm going to start closing it and that'll slow the, uh, the air release and I have more control the other thing I want to mention is the red collar, when you tighten it down, you want to go all the way down and back it up about an eighth of a turn. The reason is, it's not you're not shutting a typical valve. You have to. Your uh, we use two O-rings to seal one on top and one on bottom. And one of, if one of them is touching metal, you might experience some leaking. Just back it up an eighth of a turn, and you'll be fine. So. Uh, Thanks for watching the video. Of course, this whole install process is a lot easier if you can do it with the wheel on a, on a desk or a bench or something. But I did want to show you that it is still possible that if your wheels are already mounted uh, on your tire with your tires, that it is doable to install these monster belts. Thanks for watching. We'll get you in the next one.